Jackson. 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 Yeah, Jackson's not here to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it was rush hour traffic. Oh. <laughs> you full stop lights red. red, you know. We'll call a regular meeting in Norm Economic Development Authority for Tuesday, September 10th, 8 a.m. to order. <laughs> First item on the agenda is roll call. We do have a quorum, so we'll go on and uh, approve the minutes of the last meeting. I'll move them. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion on anything? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number three, EDA Director's Administrative Report. Heather. All right. Um, you have, <coughs> excuse me, you have the report um, in your packet before you. Um, just point out, uh, last month I did give you an update on the operating fund lawsuit for the public housing program. The government had until August 26th to file a notice of appeal and they did file that on uh, August 26th. So now we wait uh, again. Um, under the Home Buyer Assistance Loan Program, uh, note that we did receive and approve another application during the month of August. We have about $4,500 um, still available for um, new applicants. Um, and under the Rental Properties Fund, probably the biggest item we had um, happen last month, uh, we have a rental house located at 320 North Broadway, right next door to Broadway House. Um, they had a sewer line collapse, so um, major, major repair. Um, the total cost will be approximately $10,000, and we um, have been paying for the renters to stay in a hotel for about a week um, until they can get back into the house. They had no running water, so, <laughs> yeah. So um, they should be getting back into the house tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, so just wanted to uh, point that out because you'll see that bill come through next month. Um, and other than that, unless there's any questions, those are the highlights. Anybody have any questions for Heather? Oh, we'll that? Go ahead. I'll make a motion to accept the Economic Development Authority administrative activities for the month of August 27, 19. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number four, Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. Heather? All right. Um, it is, as you all know, it is budget season, so this will be the first of our five budgets coming before you um, before the end of the year, the Section 8 budget. Um, so we administer 124 Section 8 Housing Choice vouchers for the um, serving Brown County. Um, that funding comes from the Department of Housing and Urban Development and uh, we receive housing assistance payments that we are able to use to pay the landlords. Um, and then we also receive an administrative fee disbursement to help cover our um, staffing and other office expenses. Um, Congress hasn't passed the budget for next year yet. They're just um, getting into that process now. So our funding levels for the upcoming year are unknown. So we're basing the 2020 budget at this time <clears throat> on our year-to-date activity for the current year. Um, and as you're aware the primary issue regarding this program um, has been inadequate funding. They, HUD has not been fully funding this program for many years. Um, I don't remember the last year we were able to fully fund the 124 vouchers. We're running in the high 80s right now. Um, probably could could fund you know about 10 more vouchers. We've been issuing vouchers. We are adding people to the program all the time, but unfortunately, it seems as many as we add, we have that many go off the program, so we're kind of treading water. We're trying to get our numbers up. Um, we did submit our CMAP report in July, and I haven't received the CMAP score yet, but I do believe we will take a hit on our score 
for underutilization of our vouchers. Um, and it is not for lack of trying. Staff has been working very hard to add people on the program, and we have been adding. But like I say, unfortunately, we continue to lose, for many reasons, people off the program. Um, so uh, just kind of be prepared for that when that CMAP score comes in. <coughs> Um, this budget really primarily is status quo, so there aren't any, any major changes. Um, you've got the proposed budget attached, um, and I'll take any questions on the budget if there are any. So you had said we don't have enough funding to really fund the full 124 vouchers. How much do we receive because you said we're underutilizing at the same time? So right. So could, how many could we theoretically fund? We could probably add another 10 with so the funding that we're getting. We just haven't been able to get there. Okay. Yeah, we're trying okay. very hard. Um, so. so what's the penalty? You know, we've always scored in the high performer range. I think this time we may come in at a standard performer uh, because of that. Okay. Um, I don't know if that will affect our funding. Um, you know, we're not in the troubled. Right. I don't think we'll be in the troubled. Um, I think that's where you, you know, start to worry about your funding. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I've never had it happen, so I'm <laughs> nervous about it. Any other questions? I'll offer a resolution waive the reading to adopt the 2020 Section 8 <coughs> Housing <coughs> Choice Voucher Program Annual Budget. I will second. We have a motion and a second off the resolution. Waived reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Heather, please call the roll. Right. Commissioner Brum? Yes. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Yanni? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 4.2, fair market rent and payment standards. Heather? All right. On an annual basis, the Department of Housing and Urban Development comes out with new fair market rents for every county that administers the Section 8 program. Um, so the fair market rents are the gross rents um, that include rent and any tenant paid utilities. Um, our program uses the fair market rents for Brown County, Minnesota. Uh, the new FMRs for Brown County, um, you can see for 2020, for a one bedroom, 573, two bedroom, 714, three bedroom, 890, uh, and a four bedroom 967. Um, and then the Section 8 program uses the fair market rents to set their payment standards for the Section 8 program. Um, the payment standard is the maximum amount of rental assistance we can provide a family based on their voucher size. Um, HUD allows housing authorities to set the payment standards for the Section 8 program within 90 to 110 percent of the established fair market rents for their service area. Um, and with the new fair market rents um, that have come out, staff is recommending to set the payment standards at 100% of the fair market rents for the area, um, so the same, um, the same as the fair market rents. Um, I did an analysis of the program, and um, the proposed payment standards should be adequate for voucher, folder, voucher holders to find suitable housing in the area. Um, the biggest challenge we're seeing with people that get vouchers is finding a vacancy because we just have really low vacancy rates. Um, and we are, we are allowing people to relocate to other areas if they're able to find housing outside of Brown County. Um, so like I say, um, we're doing everything we can to help them be successful and use their voucher. So this kind of relates back to the previous issue then with not being able to fulfill some of those vouchers? Or um, just the fact that there's a lack of availability of housing? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we were to raise that, say, from 100 to 110, would that make more units available potentially for uh, uh, folks on the, uh, with the, um, the vouchers? Or does that then cut into our funding, I suppose? Well, it's, I don't want to set them so high that they're able to be overhoused you know if they have a two-bedroom voucher I don't want them to be able to necessarily rent a three-bedroom because we've set the payment standards so high you know I want to help as many families as I can mm -hmm. um, so, it's kind so of I do want them in the appropriate 
sure. appropriate size unit for their family size. Um, <coughs> <coughs> so I don't want to go too high. Um, you know, if there if there aren't any vacancies, the voucher could be two thousand dollars, and it wouldn't help them. You know, if there's if there's not a unit available. Mm -hmm. So. Any other questions? I'll offer a motion to approve the fair market rents and payment standards for second, Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. I'll okay. second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5.1, flat rent for public housing programs. Heather? All right, so when the new fair market rents come out every year, we take a look at our flat rents for the public housing program. Um, so anyone living in public housing is paying 30% of their adjusted income for rent and utilities. Um, and on an annual basis, if they're income-based, um, we do an annual recertification and recalculate <coughs> their rent. For families that have had their income go up um, over time, they can choose the option to pay flat rent and do a recertification every three years. Um, I like to keep the flat rents in line with the fair market rents to encourage people in public housing that are able to afford a rental in the private market to um, move out of public housing into the private rental market or home ownership um, so that they're making that public housing unit available for someone on the waiting list too. Um, get that rental assistance. Um, so I am proposing to increase the flat rents to the fair market rents, one bedroom 573, <coughs> two bedroom 714, three bedroom 890, and four bedroom 967. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? The only question I, it says effective October 1st, which would only be like a two week notice, is that people already know this might be going up yeah um, and this would only affect them at their next recertification for Broadway house those are effective March 1st 2020 and for the family units they'd be effective September 1st 2020 so okay. they have adequate notice that's fine I'll approve the motion a second we have a motion and a second any more discussion seeing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. those no motion carry Item 5.2, EDA claims list, list of claims paid here. Anything we should be aware of out of the ordinary? For the most part, it was a routine month. Um, there were three pay, pay periods in the month of August, so the city of New Alm reimbursement is a little higher because of that third payroll. Mm -hmm. And then we have the final payment for the capital fund project at Broadway House, the pneumatic replacement system. Um, so you'll see that on there to Poppy Distributing. Why is it CFP 2017? What, what's that? Because we're using the capital funds from, the capital fund grant from 2017 to pay that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll offer the motion to pay the claims. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 6.1, fund Herman, Heights, Herman Hillside project in the amount of $100,000. Chris? Okay. Um, at uh, their July 23rd meeting, the Herman Hillside uh, committee recommended approval of option two, which is part of the packet. Um, this includes three retaining walls uh, with a um, beveled face block that has a casota stone color uh, and there'll be wild flower wildflowers and other plantings around the wall um, so this was taken to council and at their august 6 meeting city council approved to move forward with the construction documents for option two um, the reason that this is coming before the eda uh, is the project is a little short on funding and the reason i'm bringing it to eda is that Herman Heights, uh, or Herman Hart, or Herman's Park, is 
a tourist destination that pulls visitors from all over the world. Um, and with this, the wall, Herman Monument, kind of everything as they're driving up Center Street, it's the first thing they see. And if we're trying to improve the park and make it more of a destination, a premier park in the city, this project needs to get done. Um, and as economic development, tur tourism is a huge part of that. So people will come here, they'll visit the park, they'll go downtown, they'll eat, they'll eat food, they potentially um, stay at hotels. So even though the money doesn't come back to the EDA, it does come to the city um, through that tourism, um, tourism tax and, and goes through the CVB and everything. So this $100,000 will help fund the project um, currently, uh, EDA has about $1.5 million, um, so it's not dipping too much into the EDA balance. Um, and so overall, finish the park uh, and make that wall uh, nice, a nice entrance as visitors come in. Thank you. Any questions for Chris? Um, just a question on, on some of the funding, um, just based on the information provided, mm -hmm. and doing the quick math, it doesn't really cover all the expenses are there some contingencies or other funding sources that are not included in here so the city um, will use some fund balance and then potentially part of the levy will be okay so it's all funded it all be funded and they're not going to come back and ask for more okay nope. that's I guess where, <laughs> where I was coming from <laughs> so if we didn't approve this it would still move forward Yes, and we'd either have to dip into city fund balance or tax the residents uh, added to part of the levy. Just curious. What's the timeline for this project? Uh, next year, August of next year. Finished? Yeah, finished next year. Okay. So this will also be done in conjunction with the Herman Park project at the same time. They'll both finish. Okay. <coughs> Any more questions? I'm going to move the request. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no? Motion carries. Item. 6.2, approve funding for the German Park Amphitheater in amount of $150,000. Chris? So along the same lines, this is kind of the same request. Um, the German Park Amphitheater is the last item left on the German Park Master Plan. Uh, this project's been in works for about 10 years, uh, and the, I think the time is right right now um, to finish the project out. As the years go by, um, construction costs will just continue to grow. And if we don't finish this project now, we're probably not going to be able to do it in the future as donors are looking to potentially pull funding if we don't fund this project and move it forward. Uh, and then the cost will just es escalate, costing the city uh, more money. Um, so the request for 150000 um, is one step in the right direction. Uh, Tom will definitely still have about $268,000 to fundraise between now and, and when the project is finished. Um, and this will be in line with kind of what uh, the city has already um, put aside. So it's almost like matching funds from the EDA to help this project along. Uh, and the same principle would apply. So once the park is done, again, in the same timeline, uh, August 2020, um, We'll be able to do more programming, which again will bring more people down to German Park, which then in turn would potentially go up to the restaurants and bars and kind of that uh, multiply, uh, multiply, multiplying factor um, to have those dollars circulate um, through the city. And so overall an economic tool to help us get um, more festivals and more tourists and you know just a nice venue for residents here to use. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris? Now, some of the pictures that you're, you're seeing in our, our viewpoint here does not include that shelter, or the, I don't know if I want to call it shelter, the umbrella, the yeah. shade. Yeah, the shade structure is not included. Um, How in much order, was that again, uh, just to remind me? About 202000 for, for the shade structure. 
Um, so we took that out so we can actually do the amphitheater uh, and get it completed. And if donors want to donate after the project is done to put that shade structure up at a different time, um, it will be built to for the shade structure to actually be there. This is a project that, like I said, it's been 10 years in the making and the, um, since the city council approved moving forward last uh, week, um, I've got a lot of very nice calls and people just so appreciative that we're finally finishing this park. And we have a lot of older folks that just really enjoy the music and, and uh, with the not being able to, not having a handicapped accessible, um, either have people way up at the sidewalk or way down at the bottom and nowhere in between. And, and I just think we're going to draw more people. It's going to make our town more enticing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to move this one too. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I have a question though. The way the drawings look, is there room enough for a person to put a chair on there, like mm -hmm. a lawn chair? It's not just seating that they need to sit. There's fully room for a lawn chair that yeah. they won't tip over or anything like that. That is correct. And had this not gone through, it would, you would find sources for it otherwise. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the wild card here is what remainder they could do in terms of fundraising. Yep. Um, and and again, the city's going to fill any potential gaps. So this is going to move forward. Mm -hmm. But again, I can see the economic benefit of this. So um, I'll, so. yeah. I, in our lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, having yeah. been sitting at concerts and kind of leaning forward, uh, you know, I, I rolled on the road. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not on purpose. <coughs> anyway. Um. And having been to the, the one in Mankato with their amphitheater, I mean, it's a very nice venue. It, so is. it would be great to have something completed like that in town here. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no, motion carries. Item 6.3, offer resolution, well let's see. 2020 budget for the EDA general fund. All right, um, the EDA needs to pass their budget um, today so it can go to city council on September 17th um, where they'll set the preliminary levy. Um, so the 2020 budget again is a status quo maintaining operations. Um, the EDA levy has been and still is for 2020 at the maximum level allowed by statute. Um, the EDA continues to pay assessments on the nine lots that remain unsold in the Milford Heights subdivision. Um, currently the annual assessment payments including interest is around $39,000 and due to these payments the EDA has a budgeted deficit for 2020 um, but we do have enough in cash reserves to cover the deficit for the year. Um, so you can see the attached budget and if there's any questions do you know the total um, balance remaining on those assessments? Nicole? I don't mean to put you on the spot, Nicole, sorry, but just curious. <laughs> like 400,000, it's like another nine years worth of payments. Okay. Yeah. Could you bring that next month? I can, yeah. Thanks. And that's mainly the street improvements, so we're kind of just the at the beginning of paying those assessments. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so those, that's earlier in the mm -hmm. cycle then, too. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why the balance, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the original assessments only have a year left, I think. Sure, okay, that makes more sense. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to offer the resolution and waive the reading to adopt the 2020 budget for the EEA General Fund. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to offer the resolution, waive the reading, any more discussion? Seeing none, Heather, please call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Yanni? Yes. Commissioner Schultz? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item number seven, Economic Development Director Assistant City Manager Activity Report. Do you have it in front? Audrey, do you want to add anything? Um, I won't add anything additional that's not already highlighted, um, but just it seems like child care has been a hot topic this past month. I've had some significant interest in <coughs> businesses interested in potentially starting them, um, really following up with those that are in process. Um, 
so that's still a really strong issue in our community. Yeah. Any update from the retail strategies? We do not have an update today, um, but we will get that. Right. To, uh, we're looking at how should we present that information. Okay. So um, just an update on that. So at the work study session for the council, they'll all be presenting on retail strategies, uh, what they've done so far, uh, and then at the chamber board meeting uh, next week as well. And then I'll give the EDA uh, the same presentation in October, uh, unless you can make one of the other the other two meetings. But in October, I'll be uh, presenting that information. Okay. Can I ask why, why are you presenting and not them? They said they would come. Um, it's because they gave me the presentation and I can pretty much do exactly what they would do. Um, the information, uh, <coughs> they gave me kind of my version of the presentation and then a version that's available for the public, um, to, to hand out and to you. So, um, I'll be pre presenting on that. My only concern is if, and I don't know if we'll have questions that they maybe you might not be able to answer, like what's, and maybe that's in the presentation, but we haven't seen it yet, no. but. I know they said they were very willing to show up when we wanted them, and we have four different entities mm -hmm. kicking in funds. So is that presentation going out to all four? Yep, I'll give the presentation to all, all the all the individuals. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm very curious to see where they're at, and um, mm -hmm. there's an, there's been some people in the community that know we're doing this, and they're they know the first six months is up now, <coughs> September 1st. So it's like, okay, what do you got for us? Yeah. You know, and, and we know the first section was research and that we all knew that that we weren't going to get a lot the first six months but um other than find out their research results and but uh so you're going to do that at so the october meeting, the october um, meeting for here. eda uh, the city council uh at the work uh, work study and at the chamber board meeting so the only one that will be missing will be the edc and their their meetings are hit and miss. They have them sometimes and sometimes they don't. So at their next one, I'll be presenting. Uh, we can maybe talk about it later, but if you're doing it at the work session, it's not going to get any publicity mm -hmm. where people want to know what's going on. So maybe we, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had another question. I know it's been um, a few months now that um, we're full staff. We have a person in the economic development position um, and we're getting towards the end of the year I guess it just might be my um, belief that we should be setting some goals for the EDA you know last year we were working pretty hard let's get those lots sold and let's get all that stuff done and and we've slowed down a little bit I think because of that opening and the change in administration um, but I'm thinking we need to get back up on the horse and get going and and set some goals and figure out where the EDA is going. So I'm wondering if that is something that you team can work on and and bring some goals for us to look at or or get our input on and, and get some goals set for next year or even the end of this year. And we still got those nine lots sitting there and we're not doing anything with them. And, and well, hopefully and we soon, to, soon to be eight, right, Chris? Soon to be eight. <laughs> uh, we did have interest in a okay. one lot. Yeah, so. and, right. and potentially, um, working with a developer that might be interested in, in those lots as well so work is, is is continuing it is a little slow but um if someone's looking at coming in and, and taking them taking them all uh kind of holding until they say no you know like nope this isn't going to pencil out for us and then we can really move forward with what we want to do with the rest but someone currently is potentially interested in, in taking the rest of the lots um, right. that are available so um, and then what then where, where does this group go next mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what is our future where are we going and I, I think we need some direction so we're not just talking about the same old things all the time we, we have a lot of opportunities and to go different directions and and uh, I, I think there there's certainly a lot of background things going on right now I mean we're right. talking small business grants we're talking sure. rehab loan funds we're talking um, coordinating some work or some things with the EDC um, they're trying to kind of get their sense of focus back and and I sit on that board as well so um, I think uh, you know there's things about workforce development uh, a workforce training center that's maybe in the works that I, I could see us being uh, a, a participant in and perhaps some with some funding and stuff so I, I think in an abstract sense there's a lot of 
potential things out there if uh but, but what are I, our I, well and i agree with you i think we we probably want to maybe make our own set of strategic objectives and and i think that starts number one by listening so that we're kind of in tune with the wider community as to what's some of the issues that are going on mm -hmm. and then what we can do to facilitate some of those things sometimes it might be uh, going out and, and seeking grant funds and we have the resources to do that sometimes we can maybe put some of our own money into the kitty like we did today with with Herman and, and the amphitheater but you know and I, I think all of those things and I, I foresee some really good things coming we're, we're we have a full team again so I, I think that that's uh, that's good push. news <laughs> yeah exactly and maybe it's maybe it's the daycare issue that you brought up maybe we get behind that and we get that going and and figure out a way to support that endeavor and get that moving in our community whatever you know whatever our group comes up with so I'm excited about what those potential options are for mm -hmm. for EDA so is daycare a hindrance when it comes to companies wanting to come to New Ulm do they look at that at all oh absolutely, absolutely. they do yeah okay I know we know it's a hindrance in individuals as employees coming to our community mm -hmm. so <coughs> if you have someone that's looking <coughs> to bring a company and they are potentially going to be hiring young families mm -hmm. then that will definitely be a consideration especially newborns and we are right. not the only community you know every time we say you know we talk about these things we have to know we're not the only community that's facing this um, but communities are doing creative things to um, help meet the need thank you and i just commend heather for reaching you know we've been working with brown county who does the licensing <coughs> for the in-home and the state does the licensing for the <coughs> centers so both of us have been really active in reaching out and making those connections building a network of support so we can oh. Good. You, you still have the, your periodic meetings with the daycare providers too we did we started those in the spring we took summer off per their request with wanting to spend time with their children who were home from school and family vacations um, so we are meeting um, actually Thursday night we're starting up our <coughs> meeting again and I did find out that another family daycare recently closed um, so we're we're wanting to retain the ones that we have and encourage people that are thinking about opening a daycare in their home to move forward and do so um, I sent Chris a proposal for a, a grant to help cover some of their some or all if they're new of their training costs their annual training that they're required to have um, and he's taking a look at that so that may be coming to you um, to mm -hmm. look at a draft in the future so yeah we're we're doing some things behind the scenes they're just not prime time ready yet so okay. they'll be coming okay. um, so I didn't put a timeline and I'm not really making a motion or anything so but I'm encouraging to come back with something at some point and or in the near future about so we can all kind of figure out where is it that we're going to go and so maybe we could look at at a future meeting that you could provide us with a set of five to ten strategic objectives in, in a timeline yeah. would That's that be unreasonable idea. to ask I think if we shoot for November December okay we should yeah. be able to do mm -hmm. that that'd be wonderful perfect with that I'll offer a motion to accept the economic <coughs> development assistant city managers report I will second we have a motion and a second any more discussion seeing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed no motion carries but no more business meeting adjourned excuse me